stretch out. Ready whenever you are, Michael. Just give me a second. Oh, the little arrow at the top. I know. I can do. Is it? I can do this. It can. Before I start this, I just want to say, I might come out very biased and make it very one-sided, but it's totally not that. It's just from what I see the American dream from a black culture and my standpoint. So, the definition, oh, oops, sorry. So the defini definition of, America, of the American dream, according to dictionary.com, is the idea that every citizen, U.S. citizen should have the equal opportunity to achieve and successful, prosper through hard work and determination. And I believe that's, that is true, everybody, that, that is the American dream for everybody. Well, that, that's what, uh, according to the de uh, dictionary, that's what it is, but to my culture, it may be something else than to what everybody else might, may think it is. So I did some research, I contacted some people, like my mom, my grandma, my, my sisters, and then this is some of the things that they said, the black culture, the American dream to them is. So you have stuff like, Prosper, uh, prosper in this corrupt system, make something of yourself, be free from poverty, incarnation, and truly accepted by the majority just on um, basis of personality, not just your skin tone. And that's something that we really have a problem with nowadays, and like that's something that, that's really been going on. So I just felt like it was something that hit home for me, and I just wanted to share some of that, share some of the information I got, and some of the research I did with you guys. So the three main points I'll be talking about today is how did the black culture get to this point? Uh, where is the black culture at now and how can we change it in the future? So how did the black culture get to this point? These three main, these are one of the three main things that I came up with and then I had some research with. Slavery. I know slavery is just a, a basic thing that everybody knows about, it's not too much. Like everybody knows slavery plays a big part in the role of, of America today how it was, America was built on slavery and how black people are viewed nowadays too because people think that slavery is gone and it's like there's no racism no more but it really is just as you guys can see throughout the news how there's some hate crimes going on right now and just not all equal sometimes for like for us so it's just kind of hard for us to just to chill this thing is slavery and crazy part is my great grandma was a slavery was a slave so it that shows how close how like how like we're not even that far from it. Like my great grandma, she just died maybe two, three years ago, and she was a slave. And it's something I learned last year, and it just really like hit home for me. Like that's crazy. Like my my grandma's mother was a slave, so it just proves that like it's it's still around. It's not like it just this just didn't happen. Another thing is rap music. Rap music has created a, a negative. Uh, effect on with the black culture. We black music is is viewed sometimes as a gateway to different things. So I feel like rap music has has better people life and it has uh, worse in people life as well. Like this these is three of the main groups three of the main people that rappers you know NWA who pretty much started the whole rap music and the whole F the police and the whole movement like that. And then Gucci Mane, he, <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows about Gucci Mane, but he just got, uh, got out of jail from serving a sentence of murder. So it, it's just crazy. And then the Migos is right now, I know everybody probably heard the song Bad and Bougie. This is one of the hottest songs out right now. And this just shows like how, how it came from this to that and, up, and that's what it is now. So like rap music is just, it's, it, people better themselves from rap music, but it can also worsen itself. Like all three of these, Oh, this group, that group, and that man right there have all been uh, incarcerated between just being uh, being like generalized and just stuff like that. Like it's just been crazy how like rap music been playing a big part and it's been playing a big part of my life too. Cause Snoop Dogg's my uncle, so it's like I've been around it my whole life. Been around the scenes and the ups and the downs with it. So it's just something that I really take into heart and that. I really think that it's uh, something that makes the black culture what it is today. 
poverty, poverty. Poverty is probably one of the biggest things that's holding the black culture back right now. We, as as black people, we uh, we are the most we we had we are in the most poverty in the U.S. today. According to PovertyUS.com, in 2015, there was there's 43 million people in poverty, and in those 43 people, two, 21 21 million was black people. That shows how like it's hard for us to better ourselves. Like we just it's just stuck on us, and it's just something that we just can't shake off sometimes. And like you, uh, you as you see with poverty, it comes gains and. See uh, kids being exposed to guns at a younger age because that's all they're growing up around. If you go to uh, this place in Atlanta called Zone Six, it's probably one of the uh, worst places in, in poverty in America right now. And there, there's kids being exposed to guns at the age of 10 and joining gangs at the age of 10 and 11. So it just shows that poverty is a really big issue that the black culture is that uh, we're, we're attached upon, and like it's hard to shake it sometimes. So I like to talk about where the black culture is now. The black culture, where is it now? Black lives matter. I know every time there's a, a tragedy in America, you see something about the black lives matter, and it's just like, oh, the black people, they only care about themselves, they only care about when somebody gets hurt. But it's not like that. And then I feel like people got to have the wrong impression when we say black lives matter. It's like we're being anti-white, or like, we're not saying that all, uh, uh, Nobody else uh, lives matter. It's, in reality, all lives matter, but we're just focusing on the black lives matter at this particular point. It's not something that we feel like, oh, we're just better than everyone. Like, we feel we deserve more. It's just that we just feel like we're, we're cheated out of a couple of things here and there. So I was just, uh, that is something that we've just been going through as a nation right now. And according to USA Today, since the Black Lives Matter movement has started in, in July, uh, July 13, 2013, there has been a 15, uh, there has been a 15 percent increase on unarmed Black people crimes dealing with the police. It's crazy how we the movement starts and the crime rate and the crime goes up. It shows that we are still. It shows that we still have a problem in our system. It's still kind of corrupt because, like, as soon as this started popping up, more people. We've been divided more rather than united because I feel like, like I said, some people are just, just feel like we're, we're, we feel like we deserve more and we're just anti everybody else and just all black lives matter. But in reality, that's not what it is at all. I love all, and that's, and that's, ooh, that's, ooh, I can't say that word right now. <laughs> I love all people, I should just say. <laughs> I love everybody. I feel like everybody deserves the uh, equality and everybody just should just live their life how they should live. Police brutality, that is another issue right now that's going on in our world as a black culture. It's just, it's been crazy how many, how, how every, every month, every week, you hear about another black man getting killed by the police or just how he, how we just been justified as just classified as just thugs and gang members and just people who just, we just feel like we just can't shake that, that jacket that's on us sometimes. And according to Washington Post, there have been several officers who have gone to trial for mur for uh, murder on uh, in 2016. I'm sorry. There have been uh, several officers who been uh, trial for murder, and then none of them has has served a uh, jail sentence in 2016. And there's been there's been in 2016, according to Washington Post again. 963 people have been shot and killed by the police, and 733 of those people have been black people. That shows you how crazy it is right now for us. And like, my mom told me that she, my mom calls me every day, asks me how I'm doing, because she's just always scared. She doesn't know, because this is something that's been going on forever. Now she has a black son who, who doesn't know, who doesn't know if this is time today or if I'm gonna run into the police, how, how the situation will be handled. So it's just crazy how like it's just coming from a stand. I'm just saying from my standpoint, and I know that if you feel me, uh, the other people, other black people in this room will understand my point too. I know everybody. I know everybody's parents care for them and stuff though. But I'm just saying how like it's just 
it's just uh, a little more in detail for us right now because the it's just so like hot right now, I should say. And how can you change the black culture and how it's viewed in the future? You see my man got the little future glasses on right here. <laughs> I say equality. Equality, according to Webster.com, equality means equal to be equal or the state of being equal. And I feel like that's something that we have to get back to as a, as a whole right now, just so we could feel like we're equal again. Because right now, I feel like the nation is kind of divided right now. It's like you're either, you're either pro-black or you're pro-white. It's not like we're all equal right now. We just have a big problem with that right now. And I'd like to say that, going back to what, what uh, my grandmother said, one of her quotes that was uh, earlier, what she thinks the black culture is, she said that she wants she wants more equal uh, want to be more equal, and I did some research. So according to uh, the Washington Post again, the employment rate for uh, for the same education as as white men and to black men, if they have the same education, the, the unemployment rate is twice as much for black men than it is to white men. And that's with the same uh, cr credentials and the same. Uh, and uh, have the same education. It just shows that we're not always equal. We're not always, we all we don't always have the fair chance. So like, I just feel like that's just something that, that was mind blowing to me. I didn't know that. When I did the research, I was kind of shocked myself because I feel like sometimes, what if I'm, what am I going to school for if I get the same education as somebody else and he's just gonna get the job uh, just because my skin tone is different than his and I come off a different way. So it's just kind of something that is just, Food for thought for you guys. Another way we could uh, we could better ourselves as, as a black culture is black excellence. Black excellence to the Urban Dictionary is someone that is black and is, has great qualities, abilities that make the black community proud. And I feel like as a black man, that's that's all we're always trying to do is just to make our to make our people proud and make our family proud and like that's something that's big for us just having having the back of like the black community it just feels it just feels way better than just feeling like an outskirts of it as well because you some people like I can't think of her right name right now but she's like very anti-black anti-black so it's like the whole black community is against her and the white community is against her so she's kind of like stuck in the middle of, of her whole little situation she has going on right now and it's kind of crazy but for these, I know you guys are probably looking, but these are some of the artists. This is Jay-Z, this is Rick Ross. Jay-Z right now, he went from selling drugs and being incarcerated twice to now his network being 600, 670 million. That's, that's one of the biggest networks out right now for, for, for a black man, for sure, because that's crazy. From somebody who went from like, like this to like that, from selling, from selling drugs and being at the Met Gala now. It's, it's crazy to see how people can prosper and stuff like that. Also, Rick Ross, he's been to jail 47 times. 47. <laughs> and his network is now 130 million. And that's that's crazy too, because just seeing somebody else like prosper from some, being something from the, uh, being nothing to something. So it's just crazy. And he owns right now, as you can tell, he, he likes to eat. He owns 37 wing stops and 41 rallies and checkers. So it's kind of crazy to see how he uh, how he changed his life around. I know y'all like, it's time to wrap it up. So I know that's what I'm gonna do. So now that I talked about how where, where the culture has been, where we're at now, how we can change it to the future. I just hope that all, all you guys understand something, that so, understand something about the black culture, how we feel and how we think, and how we uh, how we just look, how we view the world, and how the world is viewed to us. And thank you.